Hi everyone, today we're going to look at how do I find the HBS and LCM of two numbers. That's the highest common factor and lowest common factor of two numbers. As always, I'd like you to start by answering these questions on the board, then we'll go through them and then we'll start the lesson. The first question up on the top left here says express as a product of prime factors. So just recapping what we did last lesson. So we do a factor tree first of all, 90. I'm going to do 3 multiplied by 30. You might have done 2 and 45 or 9 and 10. That's fine. And 30 it can be 3 multiplied by 10. 3 is a prime number. 10 is 2 multiplied by 5. And 2 and 5 are prime numbers. So as a product of its prime factors, 2 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5. And 210 is a product of its prime factors. I'm going to divide by 2. Get 105. Ends in 5, so I know that 5 is a factor. 5 goes into 105. And if you're not sure, you can do short division. 5 goes into 1 0 times. Carry over the 1. 5 goes into 10 twice. And 5 goes into 1. 5 goes into 5 once. So 5 and 21. 5 is the prime number. And 3 multiplied by 7. We end up with 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 7. Now you really need to be confident at these skills for today's lesson. I'm going to move over to the right hand side. Find the highest common factor of the following numbers. Now what I'm hoping that you'll do for this is list out the factors and then choose the highest common factor. So 6 and 9. The factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Factors of 9 are 1 and 9 and 3 times 3. The highest common factor is 3. Uh, for B, 14 and 18, I'm going to use the same method. 1 and 14, 2 and 7. Notice how I list my in pairs. I do 1 multiplied by 14, 2 multiplied by 7. Personally, I think that's the most efficient method to list them. 18, I'll do 1 multiplied by 18, 2 multiplied by 9, and 3 multiplied by 6. 4 doesn't go in, 5 doesn't go in. The highest common factor here is 2. Then we're going to do 30 and 24. So 1 and 30, 2 and 15. 3 and 10, and 5 and 6. 24 is 1 and 24. 2 and 12. 3 and 8. 4 and 6. The highest common factor is 6. And lastly, 15 and 10. Factors of 15 are 1 and 15. And 3 and 5. Factors of 10 are 1 and 10. And 2 and 5. So the highest common factor is 5. This is the best way to find the highest common factor if you've got two small numbers. <coughs> now I'm going to I'm going to show you the best way to find the lowest common multiple if you've got two small numbers as well. So if we've got 5 and I'm going to list out the multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Aha, I can see I found the lowest common multiple, which is 15. There will be more common multiples, but we want the lowest one, so we stop as soon as we find a common multiple. So for 9 and 6, 9, 18, 27, 36, 6, 12, 18, the lowest common multiple is 18. And 15 and 20, 15, 30, 45, 60, 20, 40, 60. The lowest common multiple is 60. <coughs> oh, I missed one. Oh no, yes, I missed 12 and 9. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and 9. 18, 36, the 
lowest common multiple of 9 and 12 is 36. And I've found that just from listing the multiples and finding the lowest common. Okay, moving on to the next two questions, which are a recap of using the product rule. So this question here, in a school there are 20 students in year 4 and 18 students in year 5. The head teacher wants to interview one year 4 student and one year 5 student. The head teacher says there are 360 different ways to choose one year 4 student and one year 5 student. Show that the teacher is correct. So by using the product rule, I'm just going to do 20 multiplied by 18, which is 360. The next question, Erin wants to buy a rug and a mirror. In the, furn in the furniture, there are 16 rugs. I think this must mean in the furniture shop, there are 16 rugs and some different types of mirror. There are 144 ways to choose one rug and one mirror. How many different mirrors are there? So the product rule would say to do 16 multiplied by a number. get 144, where n is the type. n is the number of different types of mirrors. Let's find out what n is. We can do 144 divided by 16. I'm not going to use a calculator. I'm going to simplify that fraction. And 4 goes into 36 nine times. So there must be nine types of mirror. Okay, if you have a look at this example with me, then you can try the second one on your own afterwards. So we've got 24 written as a product of its prime factors. We have 36 written as a product of its prime factors. And I want to find the highest common factor of 24 and 36, and the lowest common multiple of 24 and 36. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going, I'm going to pop these numbers into the Venn diagram. So when we complete the Venn diagram, we'll start with the middle. So which prime factors are common to 24 and 36? There's a 2. There's another 2 common to 24 and 36. And there's also a 3 common to 24 and 36. Okay, that leaves 1, 2 left to go into 24. And a 3 left going to 36. Now to find the highest common factor, we multiply the numbers in the middle of the Venn diagram together. So I'm going to do 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, and that gives me 12. Now to find the lowest common multiple, I multiply all of the numbers in the Venn diagram together. So that's 3 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2. And that equals 3 times 3 is 9, times 2 is 18, times 2 is 36, multiplied by 2 is 72. Can you guys have a go at this one? And then I'll go through the answers afterwards. Okay, so this time, I'm going to start by seeing the common prime factors for 24 and 40. 2, whoops, 2, another 2, and another 2. That leaves a 3, 24, and a 5, for 40. So the highest common factor is 2 multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, which is 8. And the lowest common multiple is 5 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 2. So that's all of these numbers here multiplied together, all of the numbers in the Venn diagram. That gives us 15. 5 times 3 is 15, multiplied by 2 is 30, multiplied by 2 is 60, multiplied by 2 120. Okay, 
hopefully you understand how to do that. Could you have a go at these four questions? Find the highest common multiple and the lowest common, sorry, the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple for each pair of numbers. Okay, here are the answers for you to check. If you've made lots of mistakes, go back and have a look at the example again and try and work out what you've been doing wrong. And if you're okay, let's go on to the next section. Right, another example, usually in your exam, you won't be given the prime factor decompositions. You might be for some questions. Sometimes you'll just ask to find the lowest common multiple of two numbers. So if that's okay, you want to just do a little tree diagram for each of them. So we'll start with 60. And you can say 2 multiplied by 30. 2 is prime, so I'll circle it. And then we can say 2 multiplied by 15. Multiply by 15. 2 is prime, so we'll circle it. And 3 multiplied by 5. Which are both prime numbers. Let me move that one over a little bit. So I'll circle those. We can say 60 and that's point because it's prime numbers. Factors is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5. Now 72 has a product of its prime factors. I don't know why this one's red, I'll change that to black, otherwise it might be confusing. I could say 2 multiplied by 36. 2 is a prime number. And then I can say 2 multiplied by 18. Again, 2 is a prime number, so I'll circle that. And 2 multiplied by 9. Two is a prime number. And lots of people do end up circling 9, thinking that 9 is a prime number, but it's not. Has two factors, or one factor, three multiplied by three, along with one and nine. So nine isn't a prime number because it has factors one, three, and nine. So 72 is a product of its prime factors is two multiplied by two multiplied by two multiplied by three multiplied by three. Now I can set up my Venn diagram, 60 and 72. Let's have a look at the common prime factors that can go in the centre here, so 2, another 2, 3, and that's all, so that leaves a 5 to go in 60, and a 2 and a 3 to go in 72. We can say that the highest common factor is 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which is 12. And the lowest common multiple is 5 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. And it's a little bit smaller. So 5 multiplied by 3 is 15 multiplied by 3 is 5, multiplied by 2 is 90, multiplied by 2 is 180, multiplied by 2 is 360. So there we have our highest common factor and our lowest common multiple. Notice that because this tends to be a long calculator, I always start with the larger numbers and then multiply by 2 at the end because it's really easy to multiply any number by 2. Okay, you guys have a go at this one. Pause the video and once you're done, if you play it, and I'll go through the answer for you. Okay, so 50. We 
can say i multiplied by 10. 5 is prime, so I'll circle the 5. And then we can say 2 multiplied by 5. Both of those are prime numbers. So I'll circle them. And then 60. I've already done 60, but I'm just copy it over here. In fact, I'll just use this 60. Oh no, I'll do this again. It would be clearer for everyone if we do it again for 60. And do two. Oops. Two and 30. Circle the two. Three and 10. Circle the three. Two multiplied by five. Oh, ten's not prime. What happens when you try and rush things? Sometimes you need to think about them. Two multiplied by five, and both of those are prime numbers. So the prime factor decomposition of fifty is two multiplied by five multiplied by five, and of sixty is two multiplied by two multiplied by three multiplied by five. Now let's pop the numbers in our Venn diagram. There's a 2 common for both. There's a 5 common for both. And that's all. Okay, this is 50. And this is 60. So there's also a 5 in 50. And there's also a 2 and a 3 in 60. Right then, the highest common factor. So to find the highest common factor, we multiply the numbers in this section of the Venn diagram. 2 multiplied by 5 is 10. And to find the lowest common multiple, we multiply all of the numbers in the Venn diagram. So that's 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. Yep, and I've got 5 there. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, multiplied by 3 is 75, multiplied by 2 is 150, and multiplied by 2 again, 300. Brilliant. You guys have a go. Oh, no, before you have a go, we're going to try some of these questions. Really quick side questions, A, B, C, or D. Pause the video. Once you've got the answer, we'll go through. Okay, so which pair of numbers have the highest common factor of 15? Well, 15 isn't a factor of 1. It's a multiple of 1, but not a factor. So we're going to eliminate this answer. Students often get lowest common multiple and highest common factor confused. B, 30 and 60. Is 15 the highest common factor? No, 30 is the highest common factor of 30 and 60 because 30 goes into 30 and 60. 15 is a common factor, but it's not the highest. So this must also be incorrect. 14, sorry, 15 and 45, 15 is the highest common factor. What is the lowest common multiple of 12 and 15? Now we have two methods to choose from. You can either list the multiples, two, which we did at the very start of the lesson, or you can do the Venn diagram method. Because these are small numbers, I would list them, list out the multiples. So 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 15, 30, 45, 60. The lowest common multiple is 60. Three would be the highest common factor, not the lowest common multiple. Find the highest common factor of 18 and 45. Again, we've got the method that we used at the start of the lesson, or we've got the Venn diagram method. But here, because they're small numbers, I would list 1 and 18, 2, 9, and 3 and 6. They're the factors of 18, 
and 45 for 1 and 45, 3 and 15, and 5 and 9. So the highest common factor is 3. No, it's not 3. Highest common factor is 9. What is the highest common factor of 132 and 32? So here someone's been kind of done the Venn diagram for us. So we know to find the highest common factor, we multiply the two numbers in the middle correct. Assuming that that's correct, we multiply the two is 4. The highest common factor is 4. Remember to find the lowest common multiple. We multiply all of the numbers in the Venn diagram together. Find the highest common factor of 42 and 72. Now here, I would actually do the tree diagram. So 42, I've got 2 times 21, and 3 and 7. Forty-two is a product of its prime factor, and seventy-two is two multiplied by two multiplied by two multiplied by three multiplied by three. Quick end diagram. You could also list list the factors and find it that way. It might be quicker, it might take longer, depends on which method you're good at. Forty two and seventy two. And we just want the highest common factor, so we'll put two in the middle. Three in the middle here. And 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. And given that 16 equals 2 squared multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5, and 300 is 2 squared multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 squared, what's the lowest common multiple of 60 and 300? Okay, we need a Venn diagram to answer this question. This one 60 and this one 300. Okay, so they both have a 2 squared in common. 2 squared. They both have a 3 in common. A 3. And they both have 1 5 in common. 300 has that extra 5. The lowest common multiple would be 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 squared. 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, 75, 150, 300. So we did 2 squared multiplied by 3 multiplied by 5 squared. This one. Okay, hopefully you've got most of those questions correct or all of those questions correct. Now we just want you to do some basic practice on finding the highest common factor and lowest common multiple using Venn diagram. Pause the video, try these questions and then go through the answers. Okay, here's your answers. Right, now one more example for you. Now, a lot of the exam questions here tend to have some sort of problem solving elements in them. So let's have a look at this question. Two lighthouses can be seen from the top of a hill. The first flashes once every eight seconds, and the other flashes once every 15 seconds. If they flash simultaneously, 
now simultaneously means at the same time, how long is it until they flash again at the same time? So after eight seconds, let's say lighthouse one. Oh, I think my one is too big. Lighthouse one will flash after eight seconds, then again after 16, and again after 24, again after 32, and 40, and 48, and 60, oh no, and 56, and 64, and 72. And 80, 88, 96, 104, 112, 120. See, so this is taking quite a long time to list out some numbers here. Might have two. Might have been quicker doing a Venn diagram method, but I'm too far in now. Might have two, 15, 30, 45, 60. 75, add 15, 80, 90, add 15, 105, add 15, 120. Okay, so I probably should have used a Venn diagram method. And we get the, the same correct answer, 120 seconds. Also, there's less chance of making mistakes using the Venn diagram method, especially when you have the list so many. 120 seconds. If I've used multiples to solve that problem. And here are some more problems for you guys to solve. Have a go at them. And then I'll go through the answers as well after. Right, here are the answers. If you mark your questions first, then I'm going to go through the answers. But you can skip the part of the video where you've got the answer correct and only watch the part of the video where you've made a, made a mistake. Okay, question 10. One bus leaves the bus station every 15 minutes. Another bus leaves every 12 minutes. At 2.30, both buses leave the station. At what time will this next happen? So the first bus leaves at 2.30 and then every 30 minutes, so 2.45. And then it wouldn't go to 2.60, it would go to 3 o'clock because after 15 minutes, it goes up to 3 o'clock. And then 3.15, 3.30, 345, 4, 415, 430. Right, stop there. They need to add some more on. Next one, 230, 242, 254. Add 12 minutes. If I add 6, that will take me to 3 o'clock. And another 6, 306, 318, 330. The correct answer is 3.30. Question 11. Anna wants to tile her bathroom. It measures 1.2 metres by 2.16 metres. She finds the square tiles with a size length of 10, 12 or 18. Which of these tiles will fit the walls exactly? Okay, so I'm going to convert 1.2 metres. Multiplied by 100 to get 120 centimetres. 2.16 metres multiplied by 100, 216 centimetres. And I'm going to find the highest common factor of 120 and 216.
Okay, the highest common factor is 24 centimetres. Therefore, I know that 24 goes into both numbers, but also 12 goes into both numbers, 6 goes into both numbers, 3 goes into both numbers, and 2 goes into both numbers. Now, 10 doesn't go into both numbers because if we look here, there isn't an option to make 10. And 18 doesn't because if we look here, there isn't an option to make 18. So the tiles that will fit exactly are the 12 centimetre ones. Of course, the 24 centimetre one would, but she hasn't found square tiles for 24 centimetres. Question 12. The highest common factor of two numbers is 2. Write down possible pairs of numbers. Okay, there's a hint. First, choose two numbers where 2 is a factor. Is 2 the highest common factor of these two numbers? Okay, so 4 and 6 would work. 6 and 8 would work. 10 and 12 would work. And there are lots of other options, but there are three examples for you. Of question 12. Question 13. The lowest common multiple of two numbers is 18. One of the numbers is 18. Write down all the possibilities for the other number. Describe the set of numbers that you have created. You have 1 and 18. You can have 2 and 18. 3 and 18. 6 and 18, and 9 and 18. So that's a 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. The set of numbers we've created are factors of 18. Question 14. 48 equals 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3, and 36 equals 2 squared multiplied by 3 squared. Write down as a product of its prime factors, the highest common factor, and the lowest common multiple of 48 and 36. The question says we could use a Venn diagram. Oh, I don't like that. So we've got 48 and 36. And 48 is 2 to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 and 36 is 2 squared multiplied by 3 squared. There are two twos in common and one three in common and then there's two twos left for 48 and a three left for 36. So the lowest common multiple, remember the question says as a product of its prime factors, in fact, I'll start with the highest common factor because that's easier. It's 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. Or 3 multiplied by 2 squared. And the lowest common multiple, 3 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which is 3 squared multiplied by 2 to the power of 4. Question 15. <coughs> Given that a is equal to 2 cubed multiplied by 3 to the power of 4, in fact, let's do it this way, 2 cubed multiplied by 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by 5 squared, and b is 2 squared multiplied by 3 to the 6 multiplied by 5, write down as a product of its prime factors the highest common factor of a and b. Okay, so 2 cubed and 2 squared, so we can take out 2 squared, and that will leave just the 2 here. 3 to the 4 and 3 to the 6, so we can take out 3 to the 4, and that will leave 3 squared here. 5 squared and 5, if we take out the 5, and that will leave a 5 over here. So that leaves 2 and 5, and 3 squared left here. The highest common factor is 
3 to 4 multiplied by 2 squared multiplied by 5, which is 81, multiplied by 4 multiplied by 5, which is 81 multiplied by 20. Oh, I've misread the question. As a product of its prime factors, I only need to leave my answer like this. The lowest common multiple equals 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 3 to the 4 multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 2 squared multiplied by 2, which is 5 squared multiplied by 3 to the 6 multiplied by